Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rhiannon and in today's video I'm going to be taking you guys along with me on a boat tour around the Aegean Islands. Now I am starting this vlog off the night before because we have a very early wake up call tomorrow. We need to be out at reception by eight o'clock in the morning. I think we're gonna be the first pickup point. So that is why we need to be out so early. And yeah, I thought it would be best for me to film this intro now because you guys know I'm not the most organized person. And so trying to film this tomorrow would stress me out, especially as I know I'm gonna be panicking and trying to sort out all the last minute things. So I thought it would be best for me to pop in now and give you guys an intro so that you can know what to expect on our boat trip tomorrow. So in case you guys don't know, we are currently on holiday in cars. By we, I mean myself and Tom. We are staying here for a week and we are actually staying at the Gaia Palace Hotel. Now this is a TUI hotel, which means that we do get some excursions available to us so that we can book through TUI in a way. And we have decided to do that with this boat trip. So we had a few options, but we met with our holiday rep, Sean, the other day, and this was the best option for us, especially as we're quite late in booking this because we did have a delay, which I'm not gonna go into. But yeah, that delay meant that we lost a full day of our holiday here. And so we only had five days left at the time of booking this trip to actually get a place. And a lot of the things were filled up but we have managed to find this one, which is an adult only cruise around some of the Aegean islands. Now, Sean did say that depending on the day and what they're planning, it can either be a trip to two islands or three. I can't off the top of my head remember the names of the island. He did kind of mention them quickly, but I will leave them on screen if I can, and I will have them listed in the description box as well. But I'm sure to go into more detail tomorrow when we're on the trip, because I can tell you firsthand when I'm there. But yeah, it's an all day thing. We're leaving at the crack of dawn, as I mentioned, and I'm not sure until when it lasts to be honest with you guys but yeah I have been told that it is an experience that lasts the whole day we are meant to have an opportunity to go snorkeling swimming and we do also get lunch included as well which is fantastic I feel like those are all of the details that I need to tell you guys today honestly I'm better off just shutting up now and letting you guys see the actual vlog because that is going to be the interesting part and as I've mentioned I'm sure that I'll be giving you guys some information as the day goes on and as I get the information from the tour guides and the crew and things like that. So yes, I hope you enjoy. That is what you can expect in this video. I hope that we enjoy as well, actually, because yeah, this is something that I've wanted to do for a while and I'm glad that I have the opportunity to do so now, especially as it's a two-way experience as well, because we've had an amazing time on those in the past. So without further ado, let's dive into the vlog and I really do hope you enjoy it. After a boat ride that was nearly an hour and a half, we have finally made it to port and ours is SeaWorld here next to the really cool looking pirate ship but yeah this is oh my god that is amazing gonna take a picture of our boat <laughs> and then we're gonna head on so Tom's just in front of me here and this is our boat, isn't that just so cool? Oh my gosh, I love it. Good morning. Morning. Two. Yes. Thank you. Welcome. Oh, this is steep. Hello. Thank you. All right, we get to choose what we want for our lunch. So I'm going to go for chicken, I think, if we can. Hello. And chicken for me as well, please. Thank, Thank you. And we're off, guys. We are leaving port. Look at all of these ships. They are just so cool. And yeah, we are leaving now, as I mentioned. Don't know where our first stop is going to be, but we're going around some of the different islands and we're going to have an opportunity to go snorkeling and swimming and things like that. So yeah, very excited. I've got my hat ready with me as well. Turkey, this is Bodrum, so yeah, 
I didn't realise how close we were to Turkey, which is really cool. There are actually boat tours that give you day trips to and from the different islands, so you could go to Turkey for a day if you wanted, which is very cool. We didn't do that, we've been to Turkey before, but yeah, it's really smart knowing that we are so close to another country and that it's so easy to get there because look, there's barely any distance between the two and yeah, I just thought that was really cool. So that is Bodrum for you. Look how pretty this is! Wow! And that is our boat. As I showed you earlier, there are quite a few boats here already. So it's gonna be pretty busy, I think, Tom. And yeah, we're just gonna go for a look. Oh, and look, we have some like market stalls. Lovely. <gasps> we'll have to look here, Tom, see if there's any gifts for people. Wow! Oh, so we've got clothes, we've got some sponges. They have a sponge factory here somewhere. So there's a lot of sponges. <laughs> Necklaces, bracelets, snorkeling gear. We've got our own though. <laughs> wow, this is pretty. I think we're gonna head off to the kind of beachy bit first and then we'll sort of come back here on the way back because it's so busy right now with everyone disembarking. But yeah, we've got some magnets. Some more bracelets, dream catchers, See, no, no. clothes. Oh, this is lovely. Oh, and there's a sign here that says, Welcome to Sedimos, which is lovely. Oh, this is such a lovely little island. But yeah, how nice is that? So you can see the beach is pretty packed already. We've got a lot of snorkelers. I don't know if there's a lot of shops that are open. I think most of those are just houses, but yeah, the sea is so clear. Can't wait to get in there because I'm boiling. And who knows, we may even put on our scuba gear ourselves. I'm just gonna give you guys an idea of how many people are here. Look at how busy it is. There's people still coming off the boats there. It is genuinely heaving, but I can't wait to get into this water. It is so clear. But we're just going to have a nosy around some of the shops and the bars and restaurants and food places. And then we are gonna head in for a swim. Right, we're exploring guys. We found some steps that take us up here somewhere. So, I promise you we are gonna go swimming in a bit, but we just wanna have a bit of an explore first because why wouldn't you when you come to an island as beautiful as this? People taking photos there, like us, but we're pretty high already. Tom, are you okay? <laughs> but yeah, look at that. 27 people, I believe they said, lived here, which is crazy. Right, Tom, be careful here. This is beautiful. Look at the view. <laughs> Tom's just going to admire it there. Wow. That is so pretty. Let's see if we can get closer. Oh my gosh, don't go too close, Tom. <laughs> Look at that, you guys. <laughs> wow. Of course, we have all of the ships there. All of the people are down there again. But I'm in love with this place. I could very happily live here, to be honest with you. Wow. Pretty, in it, Tom? <laughs> and then look at everyone down here. Even though it's so busy, there seems to be enough room for everyone, which is nice. But yeah, I think we're gonna have a photo here now. And then head back down. Once again, guys, we are far away from the beach because we heard the chiming of some bells. 
and I believe that if we come here, yep, there is a little church. Wow, look at that. That's beautiful. Wow. So this is the bell tower, which was just chiming. I'm sorry, I missed it. But this is lovely. Literally in the middle of nowhere as well, but so, so pretty. Let's see if we can go inside. I think we're allowed to. So guys, this is the inside. Wow. <laughs> this is beautiful. Wow. In such a remote place as well, that's so hard to get to. It's crazy that this is just in the middle of this little island. It is beautiful. Wow, I'm honestly just awestruck. All the paintings there, the banners, wow. And then I'm guessing they have some sort of gathering here because there are some seats out here as well. I don't know what's this way. I don't think there's much to be honest with you. And then, yeah, there is a graveyard back here as well, which we're not going to go to because we don't want to be disrespectful, but... Isn't this just so pretty, you guys? I'm glad we found it, Tom, because mm. this is a little hidden gem back here. But, wow, it's full of uh, <laughs> a lot of expensive looking things. <laughs> I was saying, in the middle of nowhere as well, it's crazy, isn't it? It's just, yeah, mad, but it's beautiful. And, yeah, I'm very glad we found this. Right, unfortunately guys, after me going on for ages about us going swimming, I don't think we're going to because it's almost quarter two now and the boat leaves at 12 so I think we're going to just have to make our way back because we don't want to miss the boat, obviously. It'd be lovely to be stranded here but no thank you, <laughs> not today. So yeah, we're just back on the beach as you can see and then we're going to head back past those stalls we might even have a closer look at those stalls to be honest with you guys but yeah unfortunately I've had my toes in there but we're not going swimming today well we are later on but not in sediment so yeah beautiful place very happy that we stopped here and got to see it and unfortunately now we're heading on to the boat so we didn't have a lot of time here I think we could have done with an extra hour but got to keep to a tight schedule so I'm gonna leave now and I'll probably check in with you guys once we're on the boat again and just like that so we are getting back on this beautiful boat oh thank you I've got two there <laughs> thank you those are our boarding passes so we, so we make sure to keep a very close eye on them hello. Oh, hello. welcome back oh thank, thank you, you. <laughs> Well, that's cool. <laughs> shaky, shaky. <laughs> shaky. <laughs> because, yeah, that's what lets us um, board again. So, fishermen, that matters for me, isn't it? I'm changed. Go back here then. I was just asking if he wanted to go back where we were earlier, but someone's in our spot. So, I think we're just going to go here, but sat down on the side so that we can see out. But it is boiling, and I feel like we're going to get a little bit of sunburn here. <laughs> I'll probably have to put my lovely cap on in a minute, but yeah, back on the boat. There is Sedamos in the distance, and actually I think I'm going to grab a drink now because I'm parched and yeah, I could really do with one. It would be very rude not to get a Fanta Lemon, wouldn't it guys? This is my favourite drink, especially on holiday. Tom's cracked his open already. Um, it was only two euros, so yeah, lovely, refreshing drink because it is starting to get very, very hot. So I'm gonna sit down and drink my Fanta Lemon now. I think we might even put a towel over ourselves in a minute or go inside for a bit because it is sweltering and I feel like we're gonna burn. So yeah, I don't know which island is next. We're waiting for the kind of announcement. So once I know, I will let you guys know. Um, but yeah, I don't think we're having food first. I may be wrong, but oh, there goes the engine. So we're just going to sit here for now until they let us know that we're approaching our next destination or until they let us know that it's time for food. Right guys, we are approaching the next stop. I don't know what this island is called because I couldn't hear her over the sound of the engine, but the engine's just died down so that's why I'm chatting to you now. 
but look how beautiful this is. And what she and what she said is that this island is extremely dry, so the way that they drink their water is that they actually have to filter all of the seawater in order to have clean drinking water, which is really interesting. But yeah, you can see the difference here. It is very, very dry, not many trees at all. And this is where we're gonna have our lunch. So this is not a swim stop, we are just having food here. I think we've got an hour and a half here, so longer than the last time. And yeah, I think we're just gonna explore, have our meal, and yeah, see where we go from there. <laughs> a bit of a change of plan, guys. Oh, that's creepy. We are firstly going to the sponge warehouse. I told you guys earlier that they are known for their sponges here. Well, <laughs> So we're gonna go and see just how much because this is the first part of the tour. Again, we have a creepy sailor diver guy there. But yeah, a lot of sponges. <laughs> wow. That's cool. And I guess we're going up there to see what is there as well. But wow. There's so much. <laughs> Hello. English speaking English up there. Do it, do it here in the door. My English speaking upstairs. Maria, do you have a camera? Wow. Can you teach us in the world? Can you come inside? Thank you. You can, Nick, have a look around. You can see all the dance. You're the right for fun. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, first of all, I want to welcome you here. I hope you know that you are on the sponge Tigris Island. It's a tradition here over 2,000 years. Kalinians used to go for sponges. The truth is that today only 100 Kalinians dare to dive in 60, 60, 70 meters depth. Of course, today they don't use a diving helmet, but you saw a child who can see inside. Today they use scuba, you can come inside, there's plenty of space. Please come close. Today they use scuba diving suit, new techniques, no bottles, one bottle is not enough. They are connected to the boat in a extra air by electrical compressor machine, a machine from the boat. But even though the techniques are new, it's still a very risky and dangerous job. Wealthy, Job because the sponges are plenty in this period, but very dangerous. To be honest, my husband used to be a diver, but after four boys, I say it's enough. We better be here processing, selling, exporting sponges. You know, the majority of local sponges are sent outside China, Japan, Thailand, and uh, Germany, England, uh, Italy. The best market for sponges this period. The truth is that the GMC sponge is regarded as the best, not because we are here, but because the water is very salty and cold. You can feel on the skin how salty the water is. Salty and cold water in a very big depth makes sponges compact. There are also sponges in Caribbean Sea, Caribbean immigrants also who live in Tampa Springs, Florida, in USA dive for sponges. Those sponges grow in one, two meters depth and then grow, grow up very quickly. So they're very fragile because the water is difficult. But wherever the sponges are found, they're like this. This is the original sponge. Every sponge you see here, downstairs, all around, cause calinos, is black in the water. It's not so hard, it's soft, but we keep it dry because it's very smelly, we cannot stand it. <laughs> this sponge now is destroyed. The sponge, when it is gathered, needs to be cleaned the first 24 hours. So the divers gather, and the crew steps by feet, like making wine on board, using sea water, take away the black skin, so the sponge can scare in this color. So third, second. What I want to explain, everybody's asking what's happening, the sponge never stops. Yes, it's true, if the water is clean, sponges grow up again and again. So when the divers gather, the roots create new sponges. So the sponge is not a protected species. The only threat for sponge is the pollution. If the water is clean, no problem. This period, the fact that we have many sponges means that the GNC is totally clean. Understand that now, eh? Go from <laughs> When the sponge is here, in this condition, it's not ready to put on the body. 
It's natural product, but you have to treat it before you use it. So here we begin a long lasting process, clean from stones, snip, or make them yellow color. Because uh, downstairs and here you can see a variety of yellow sponges. The yellow sponges are natural sponges, but extra producing chemicals, they are bleached. Bleached to be nicer and more commercial, not cleaner. Some people believe that the lighter color is clear. It's not, to tell you the truth. The yellow sponges are less resistant. A sponge in natural color for daily use, if it's ready for use, you can have it for four and over years. The same family of sponges in yellow color, after one year starts falling apart. But because people find it nicer and ask for yellow, that's why yellow sponges are here and we bleach many. So bleaching is only for commercial reasons, nothing else. So these sponges with a big hose are the most commercial. When you hear sponge, everybody, that this is the sponge. Actually, this is more commercial because the bigger holes help to make more bubbles. And then it's easier to wash out the soap and leave it to dry. So because the main thing for you, when you have a sponge, is to keep it clean, good rinsing and dry. Anybody from Holland, Dutch? Yeah. You know that Dutch people buy sponges, expensive sponges for windows, to clean their windows. <laughs> That Deutsch people buy sponges for cars. We support the use of the natural sponge to build your body. You deserve to have a natural sponge, a natural product on your skin. For the cars, for the windows, use a plastic, whatever. <laughs> this is we use, um, in our, this is we use plastic, of course. Natural sponge are for the skin. So these ones are the most commercial, but fine silk is the best quality, more soft, but for this with small holes, it to be more scholastic. The last five spot, not the last quality, a very good and rare spot is the elephant ear. What is special for this? We cut pieces, and this is special for cosmetics for ladies. It's like a pad, beauty blender. What you can do? Iron the spot to the ladies when it's dry, close the holes and put makeup. We have learned from Japanese ladies. <laughs> you know their skin. Yeah. <laughs> so also this can be used in pottery and glass industry. Lufa is not a sponge, of course you know. Lufa is good for scrubbing, comes from the trees, it's pumpkin. But because we've asked for this, that's why we have it here. It's natural product, it's hard, but just keep in mind that Lufa scrubs on the surface. Natural sponge absorb the cells and leave the skin soft and smooth. I know it's too much blah blah blah, you're on holidays, but I'm trying to get as much as I can. We're at our last stop, guys and we're about to jump off the boat. So there's a bit of a queue going, but yeah, we are gonna jump off the boat into the sea and hopefully we should be fine. <laughs> oh my God. Can I go? Yes. Oh gosh. Oh, I'm gonna cry. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so fun. <laughs> that was quite high, but we're there, we made it. <laughs> <laughs> There's actually nothing much to see here guys. I'll give you a quick little look at the ocean but yeah, unfortunately nothing good to see.
And just like that, guys, we are off of the boat. Oh, gosh. Oh, thank you very much. Have a good thank, time. You, thank you, and you. <laughs> and just like that, you guys, we are now back at the hotel. It is about half six at night. And I can honestly say that I am knackered. Our coach picked us up at 10 past eight today and we've been out ever since. So yeah, that has definitely been a long day. We didn't actually do a lot either, but I feel like just being out in the sun all day, especially on a boat in the middle of the ocean, has just taken its toll. Both Tom and I are knackered and the hour and a half bus journey back didn't help either. So I'm gonna head in for a shower now. Tom has just hopped in there himself and freshen up a bit before we go and get food because I'm very hungry and yeah, I'm excited to see what we've got. But I just wanted to kind of close out this vlog because I feel like it's been a bit all over the place and choppy. First off, as I mentioned, we went to Sedamos, which was a lovely island as you saw. I do wish we had some more time there though. I definitely felt a bit rushed and unfortunately we didn't have time to go and swim in the sea or to go and look at a lot of the stalls by the time we'd actually walked up and went to the kind of viewpoint that you saw us at. It was essentially time to get back on the ship. So that was a bit of a letdown. I really would have liked some more time there. But then the second island that we went to was Kalimnos. Now I'm hoping that I'm pronouncing that right. I'm sorry if I'm not. But as you saw, as soon as we went off there, we went to the sponge warehouse. They are known for their sponges here in Greece, apparently. It is a very hazardous occupation. It's very dangerous. And it's definitely something that I wouldn't do myself. But yeah, I'm in awe of the people that actually do it. I should have included a clip of a woman kind of explaining how the people go on to do that and explaining about the sponges themselves. My camera did cut off, unfortunately, as she was closing off her speech. My battery ran out, which is typical. I think it was just because it was so hot and I had been filming bits and bobs all day that, yeah, the battery ran out. I didn't realize and I'd left my spare battery on the boat. So that is why I didn't film a lot of us in Kalimnos. I'm really sorry about that. But after the sponge warehouse, we went for food, which I will pop a picture of our meal up on screen for you now. It was really lovely, actually. It was chicken, chips and some kind of salad and it went down a treat, let me tell you. So yeah, that was lovely. And then again, by the time we'd gone to the sponge warehouse and then sat down for our meal, it was almost time to head back to the boat. So Tom and I walked along the docks, had a look at some other boats and, you know, saw the fish that was in the sea. And yeah, we made our way back to the boat and headed off to the third island, which I believe is called Platy. But unfortunately we weren't actually allowed to go onto that island. We were just jumping off the boat into the sea and having a swim there. That was really fun. It was something really different. Unfortunately, there wasn't really a lot to see. This tour is advertised as an Aegean cruise with the possibility of you seeing dolphins and sea turtles as you go snorkeling. And and it definitely wasn't that. We did take our own snorkeling gear just in case, but as you saw, there was no point. There was literally nothing there to see, which was a bit of a shame, but that's the look of the draw, I guess. And unfortunately, we didn't see a lot of what we wanted to in terms of the animals. Saying that though, we had a lovely day. I would definitely recommend it. The staff on board the ship were fantastic. They were really, really lovely and accommodating. What I would say is that I wish that we got more time on the actual islands, because we spent about an hour, an hour and a half on each of the islands and then we spent all the rest of the day on the boat on the ocean, which is fine. But yeah, I think I would have preferred a little bit more time actually seeing the islands and getting to know a little bit more of the kind of history of them and the culture. But you can't have everything, fortunately. And we have had a lovely day, as I mentioned, but a very tiring one. So I'm gonna wrap up this vlog here. I really do hope you enjoyed it. Sorry if it's a bit chaotic as always with my vlogs, but I'm glad that I decided to document it once again. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it seeing a little bit more of the Aegean Islands. It's definitely something that I'm glad that I've done. I really wanted to see more of those as well. So that's a bucket list item ticked off. 
If you have made it this far through into the video and would like to let me know that you're still here, please go ahead and leave me some sea-related emojis down below. That could either be an anchor for the boat, a wave emoji, or some sea creatures. It's completely up to you. I know I say it all the time, but seeing you guys comment the emoji of the video truly does mean the world to me. It baffles me that you guys watch these all the way through, but it truly does mean the world. So if you don't have anything in particular that you would like to say, but you would like to let me know that you're still here, please go ahead and comment that now. As well as that, please don't forget to click the like button if you like this video and the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content from me. But that is it for me today, guys. Thank you so, so much once again for watching. I really hope you enjoyed and I will see you soon in my next video. Goodbye.